in succession by guard. Good day, and welcome to Gaming with the Colonel. I'm Sean Moran. Uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Borodino, or Bordino, uh, a game by Columbia Games, uh, designed by Tom Daglish and Carl Wilner. Um, this is my third video, and so far so good. I'm uh, enjoying things. If you've uh, seen my other ones, are Texas Glory and Liberty, um, and it was great to see that... Uh, a few people were interested in uh, in those games. Uh, a little bit about me and why I decided to call this Game with the Colonel. I actually am a Lieutenant Colonel in the Canadian Army. I'm an infantry officer. I was uh, full-time for 20 years in the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. Um, went to part-time service in 2009. Uh, I'm now badged as a Royal Winnipeg Rifle and I work part-time with the Army Reserves. My, my full-time job is with uh, the province of Manitoba. And like everybody else who's in this sort of hobby, love war games. <laughs> so, um, I think what we'll do is I'll uh, pause. We'll have a little bit of a look at the map. We'll look at some units, some of the, the cheat sheets and stuff like that that I've been able to discover. And uh, then I'll pause again. We'll do a setup. And I think we'll play through one turn. I don't think I'll get many turns because it is a bit of a, a bigger game, uh, but most enjoyable. Okay, let's have a look at the, the map. Okay, so here we've got the map set up. Uh, I haven't had, I obviously don't have any of the counters set up uh, as of yet. We just thought we'd have a quick look at that. You can also see some of the aids that I've got. Um, I picked this up off of Board Game Geek. This actually helps you to tell you um, areas on the map and how many blocks are allowed to, to be in each area. I highly recommend printing that off. It was very useful. Um, what else? The, the game actually comes with, uh, with a setup sheet for, um, the, the scenario on the 7th of September, and I believe there are two scenarios. Uh, I've only played this one and one other one, so I can't really comment about the other ones. Uh, obviously the rules, and I printed off a Chrome summary from, um, uh, Board Game Geek. And I also printed off a little bit of history. It's like 14 pages, so I just sort of skimmed it. Um, I don't... I wouldn't say I know a ton about uh, Napoleon. I've watched some stuff and I've read some stuff, but uh, and it's certainly the war in Russia. All I really knew about was the uh, the, the the great retreat and the, the devastation of his army, which you know led to him being ousted from power. Um, what I can say about this is that um, N Napoleon's plan when he crossed into uh, Russia, you know, um, was basically to to get the Russians engaged in a major battle and flick lots of losses so that they could actually come sort of some sort of a, a, a peace agreement and basically get them on, get them on side. Uh, apparently Napoleon was, was uh, an admirer of, of Alexander. Um, but at some point there, you'd have to go back and see whatever falling out they had and, uh, and whatnot. Um, so really what's happened here is, is that, Napoleon's crossed into Russia with like 450,000 men. He's been trying to find a spot where he can engage them, the Russians. Um, the Russians have done a series of delays. Uh, there was some fighting in, uh, outside of Smolensk um, and some other, some other areas. Uh, in fact, I think uh, Napoleon left about 180,000 troops in Smolensk around that area. Um, and essentially what happens is, uh, in the beginning of September, they, the French arrive, you know, around this area of, of, of Bordeaux, and the Russians decide to basically uh, set up a defensive position and engage. So, what do we have here? So we've got the map, and different from uh, Liberty or or. Texas glory in the terms of it's not Texas. This is basically a uh, an area map, and it's not like uh, let's say Crusader X because of you know it's not point to point. I guess you could say this is this is more like a Hammer of the Scots um, in terms of uh, that. I guess it's but but so much different too because Hammer of the Scots is 
fairly smaller or, you know, just sort of, uh, sort of maybe, I wouldn't say bigger regions, but there's not as many. Whereas this one's got a ton of regions um, set up on it. And I did find that a little confusing at first when I talked about what region was what, because there are some, there are some um, terrain modifiers in terms of uh, how many blocks can go across certain hexes. There's uh, also benefits for, um, uh, or terrain modifiers for, for combat. So there's things like that. So again, back to this thing that I got, and I should have probably remembered who's, who provided this, but this was really useful in terms of determining what, what space was what. Uh, and uh, so again, I'd, I'd recommend you do that. So what do we got? We've got Bordeno right here. Uh, we've got the defensive positions. The Great Redoubt, um, the Le Flesh, and we've got uh, Severdino Redoubt. Um, and uh, apparently, what Napoleon's initial plan was was to um, advance in the north and, and take uh, Bordino and the Great Redoubt and Le Flesh, and also advance in the south towards um, Utista. And you know. A, it, it really, to me, was more of a, more of a, flunt, a frontal. Uh, apparently, one of his uh, generals wanted to do a, a big flanking, but he overruled on that. Um, and essentially, the, uh, he committed to, to that approach. Um, this game, you can see here in the game turns, it goes from 6 a.m. To, to 8 p.m. at night. There's no cards. This is, all, this is more of a command-driven you have you have leaders. These are the French leaders on on, on this side, and you have uh, the Russian leaders uh, on this side. And you basically activate leaders, and um, you do either a bombardment if you have artillery, uh, and you're in right range because you it's basically adjacent is what it is, and uh, then you do a move. <laughs> Then your the second player will do uh, the same thing. He'll uh, command, activate, uh, bombard, and then move. And then you resolve all battle. And then you basically carry on with uh, any supply rules that you have. So it seems kind of simple, but I got to tell you, there's a lot to it. Um, and you really have to think about what you're doing because there's 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 those restrictions to going across hexes. There's um, oh uh, the big thing about the commander and thing is that they just like Texas Glory. You can only command the, the units within your, your cores, except for like army commanders like Napoleon, and uh, in this case, uh, Kutuzov. Um, and they've got a range. Like, let's, let's take an example here right here. So you got Napoleon, all right? Typical uh, Columbia game block. Um, he's uh, depicted as the, the army commander. He's, but this, this, there's three in the lower right. That's how many hexes he can command from, or not hexes, regions he can command from. And you actually have to trace those regions, you know, through, um, not through enemy, uh, enemy blocks or contested areas uh, in order to be able to use that command. So there's a bunch of things like that that you have to think about when you're, when you're doing your movements and your ultimate attacks. It's not, uh, it's not easy. It makes you think. Okay. We're going to pause here, and I'm going to uh, set up for the 7th of September uh, scenario. We'll talk a bit more, and then uh, we'll play through a turn. Okay, here we are with the, the map set up with the uh, French and Russian blocks. Uh, and before we get into to playing a bit of a turn here, I just want to comment about... Uh, I, I watched uh, a video a couple of times... Um, but Marco, Marco Gamer did, did one of these uh, on Bordeno when it first came out, uh, some years ago anyways. And, and I don't know if, if things have changed or, or, or whatnot, but I, he made a comment at the end about... He didn't call it like a broken game or anything. He didn't use those terms. But he basically said there was a, an issue with the game that saw um, if the French basically amassed their their artillery with the guards in the first corps, which is strong artillery, around the redoubt here, they could essentially just bombard it and give the Russians such losses that they, you know, they 
it's not that they couldn't recover, but they could just take over the redoubt, defeat a bunch of Russians, and then, you know, uh, hang on to what they have and win. Because that's, that's another point. The, the victory conditions are basically eliminating more units on the other side. You, you get uh, a couple of victory points for if you control the redoubts, or, or you know, the redoubts, but you, um, essentially, you get a, a victory point you know, for every Russian unit you kill, two for some guard, uh, their guard type units. Whereas the, if you the Russians kill French units, you get two points for each unit. Plus you get like four points for uh, their uh, uh, guard units and, and things like that. Uh, you get you, sorry, I'm I'm not saying that exactly right, but there's a lot. You get a lot more points for for killing French units than you do Russian units. Anyways, I've played this game. Um, I got it for Christmas last year. I played it probably twice then, and then another time later on in the year. And then prior to doing this video, I played it twice. And I just don't see that um, issue. It was on Board Game Geek, and, and some, some other people say, yes, it's it's that's what can happen. But but I what I don't get is that if I'm the French, and I decide to do that, and you got some pretty serious you know artillery units, you know, A4s and things like that, um, you got to remember though too that redoubt you're allowed to put when for bombardments you're allowed to put one unit within uh, the shelter of the redoubt and you get a, a a double hit they need they need to score two hits to 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 take a hit down from that unit everybody outside that one redoubt still gets a normal bombardment which is a little tricky you got to figure that out in the rules and how you how you do that but but regardless of all of that say I'm the Russians and I'm getting hammered by the French well you got to do something right. Now, uh, an easy thing would be to do is pull back, <laughs> allow the French to take the redoubt, and then attack them because the redoubts are set up so that they're facing towards the the west. So as soon as the French take them, they don't get the double hit uh, bonus for for being attacked uh, from the Russians, uh, you know, uh, from the east into the west. So, so, so to me, I I think it's a matter of what you do and what what actions you do. Now it becomes, you know. Um, harder because you'll find that you you use uh, the supply points to uh, not only increase the strength of your units but you also you need to increase the strength of your your leaders constantly because all of a sudden when they're down in strength you can't use them anymore you can't move anything so that's an issue too but the Russians have more leaders and the Russians have more troops and the Russians can take more losses so what I'm trying to say is that I, I just don't see that issue I could be wrong. I'm happy for somebody to point it out to me that, that I am. But I just see that if the French were to do that bombardment, the Russians could just pull back, you know, give up some terrain, which is what they did anyways the, the entire campaign, and and counterattack and, and bleed the, uh, the French uh, in doing so. Um, so, anyways, that's just my comment about that. Um, I just I thought, found it interesting because uh, Marco did a great job in his review and he had that point at the end. I just wanted to... So I just, I just didn't see it. So anyways, okay, let's carry on with something else. Okay, so let's start off with the, with the turn. <clears throat> so it starts off with initiative. And what you do is you roll two dice so, uh, for either side. So let's go uh, with the French. We've got uh, a four and Russians uh, eight. So the Russians would go first. Then what you do is you have the command phase where you activate headquarters that in order to uh, and deploy them if desired um, um, so that you can move units or take actions or, or uh, um, do bombardment or movements or things like that so I look at the map and again the Russians are in a more of a defensive role uh, but there are some things that we could do so if I look at the back here um, the way, the way I've laid laid things out too, I should I should probably mention um, you you are set up in these regions that are depicted actually on the block. You see that three at the bottom there. So on the on the map, there's a map region three. You can put um, up to four blocks into a clear hex and up to uh, three in a in a wooded hex uh, and two only in swamps is what it is. So in some cases where you might have five or six blocks in a core, you can't put them all in in one in one region. So for example, the the eighth um, core over here 
I put all four blocks into the, the, the actual La Flèche Redoubt, and I put the leader behind, is what I did. He's got a range of, of one, so he can command them that way, if he wants to. Um, so that's about the setup. <clears throat> um, the militia that you have, or the French have a, a voltageurs, they can be commanded by any headquarters. They just have to be within a range of, of one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, fourth corps leader, we're going to we're going to activate you because we're going to do a bombardment because he's going to have an artillery unit in there, right there. And what else are we going to do here? <clears throat> These are all, excuse me, Jaggers. Nothing there. You know what? I think we will maybe. Maybe we'll move forward and take a little bit of ground just for fun. Are we on a road? Yes. Okay. You know what? We'll we'll activate fourth core as well. We'll do that. Um, I don't really have strategy today. So uh, first thing you do then is, is uh, do any bombardments. So with um, eighth core activated, we are going to fire from the uh, La Flèche Redoubt. And so I'm going to turn down this unit which is a an artillery unit he's an a3 strength of two but he's not in actual combat he's just doing bombardment so and you can only bombard adjacently you can't go any further than that so we're going to bombard the first core um french units in uh, severdino so you've got uh, two dice because it's a strength of two and he's got an a3 so that's now now you do have to look and see if there's any combat modifiers, and the best thing to do is go to the back page, and it tells you all that stuff. It's a little tricky for me to understand, just because I wasn't used to this type of a system. But we are bombarding into Cervadino, which is a village, so there's no uh, no effect on that. Um, if it was a swamp, there'd be a minus one uh, to your combat mo combat roll. So instead of being like A3, it'd be A2. Or if we were firing in and out of woods, uh, same sort of thing. So. Uh, there is no no modifier, so we'll do uh, two dice, A3. We get one hit. So I've got to go to the um, the strongest unit in the stack, and it's going to be one of these two uh, fives. So I will just reduce this five to a four. That ends bombardment. I like to put them face down just so I know I've used them. Um, and at the end of the turn, <clears throat> this this leader will lose a step because he's been activated. But we'll we'll just leave that uh, for now. Okay, now over here we've activated the fourth core up at the top. Let's see if we can get in there a little bit better. Okay, so we've activated the fourth core. Uh, I'm not going to even pronounce his name. So what have we got here? So generally speaking, you can move into adjacent hexes, except when you're on the road. On the road, you get uh, infantry um, and uh, I think it's light and horse artillery can move two. Oh, I might have that wrong. Anyways, I know these infantry can move two. So we're going to go one, two down the road. And I'm sure this light guy can do the same thing. So he's going to do that. Um, if you've got cavalry, I know they can move three is what they can do. Um, so, what are we going to do next here? This leader. Hmm. I don't know if we want to move him here. He's going to be open. So let's go... You know what? Let's back up. Let's go like this. And we'll move that. Just for fun. Okay. So you should know when we get into battle uh, uh, as well, you can... If you're going the, the second player, you can reinforce a battle and come in on round two, much like uh, all Columbia games. In this case, you, you do uh, three combat rounds, and then the fourth round, the attacker must retreat if he hasn't uh, defeated the enemy, and then uh, he gets per pursuing fire, like they could fire at him as he's retreating. Okay, so that was movement. Um, we don't have any battles to do, so then what will happen is we'll go to um, French turn. Okay, so what are the French going to do? Uh, let's see. Again, I haven't really thought out of any strategy, but but the French can always do lots of stuff in the opening moves because they've got they've got all that strength in the leaders, so they might as well pursue and advance. So I'll figure this out as we go along, but let's go fourth core. 
third core. What do we got in here? First core, definitely. And I'm going to do the guards. Where did I put that leader? Here, because I know I want to maneuver those guys around. The strongest units are from the Imperial Guard. So now, as note, Napoleon did not commit them, um, but I think you kind of have to uh, in this game. They've got such strong units that you want to use them. Let's see what else we got here. Already done the first core. That's fine. We know we got some weak militia units here. We might as well try to take them out. But let's go. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do um, the cavalry corps because I'm going to try to flank in the south. Now you've got these Polish, this Polish corps, and uh, for the French, and they are actually kind of weak. They're 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 useful. You know, they've got artillery and cavalry and and, and whatnot. But they're, they're better off for taking ground and things like that. I don't know if I want to commit them just yet. Let's see. Do I do that and get them to maneuver? Ah, you know what? Forget it. We won't do anything like that, just for playing around. So I'm just going to activate those leaders. But I, yeah, there's been times when I've played where I've activated all of them. That's a mistake I have made with this, is that I've if I've tried to do a lot with, with all the cores, then you just tend to run out of strength you almost or ability to maneuver it with them with uh with the leaders because they they lose their strength points oh and, and you only get in the supply phase which we're going to come to you only get in this scenario four uh four points for to supply to increase steps so that can be kind of uh tricky uh where to put those where to put those four points so anyways let's go with let us go with um the cavalry guy. Oh, when you activate a leader, you can immediately move them one uh, hex if you want, or move them at the end. Uh, it doesn't really matter in this case. So, uh, what have we got? We have got... We've got some cavalry, so let's go one, two, three. Uh, what is this? This is horse artillery, so it's one, two... Sorry, it's actually horse artillery can move three. So it's it's headquarters cavalry and horse artillery can move three on roads. So here's another horse artillery. One, two, three. And then I can't move anybody else into this hex. It's a clear hex and it's you can only stack four. In which case, this headquarters unit is going to move one, two, just like that. Let's go like that. Okay. Um... Um, actually, that's incorrect, because he, when he activates, he can only move one, so we'll go like that. He's moved, he's done nothing, so let's actually uh, reduce his step and bring him up. Okay, now let's go to the first core and see what we got. Uh, let's activate this artillery. What do we got down here? Any more? No. We got some artillery up here in the fourth core. So let's uh huh. Okay, let's let's activate him to do some bombardment. Oh, and note that I've just done this backwards, right? I've just moved the Polish core and I shouldn't have. I should have done all the bombardment first. So that's a mistake on my part. Let's take care of this artillery first before we carry on with anything else then. Okay, let's go um this heavy artillery from the first core into Lay flesh. So you've got two uh, dice. You're an A3. You're firing into the redoubt. So with a bombardment, what happens now is the, the, the Russians decide which one of their units is going to get the cover of the redoubt. So we're going to take this four and put, put him in there. Okay, we can, uh, whatever, we can keep that artillery guy. He's not going to take any damage right away anyways. So what that means is um, you've got to roll um, two hits in order to, to take one point off of that, that unit in the redoubt. Now, notice I put the strongest unit in the redoubt because you still have to take off the strongest unit. And what I figured out, or at least what I believe is correct, is that you, let's say I put a two, uh, uh, the, the artillery unit of two into that redoubt. It means that the guys that are outside the redoubt, this is just for bombardment, not for attacking. When you're actually in the battle, then everybody gets the, the bonus of the redoubt and you have to get a double hit on them. But if I had the artillery two unit in the redoubt and I had the four um, 
infantry outside the redoubt, then the stronger unit would have to take the, the hits on the outside and you wouldn't get uh, the, the, uh, the modifier. If that makes any sense, because it can be a bit confusing. So let's go here. Heavy artillery, two. Miss completely. Two fours. Nothing. Okay, so he's done. Uh, okay, let's go artillery up here. We've got an A3 firing into the Great Redoubt. Same thing. We'll go, um, we'll put this three unit in there. And we'll go two A3. Uh, there we go. Nothing. Brutal, 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 brutal. Okay, so those guys are done. So that uh, artillery is done. Now let's do some movement. Okay, some easy movement up top, perhaps. Fourth Corps will move uh, this Italian guard into here. Oh, we'll move that artillery with them. We're going to leave that artillery there. You can't actually cross the uh, Kalachka River. Um, unless you're across a bridge, that and the Moskva River, I think it is. So this guy's safe here. Nobody's going to be able to attack him. Okay, the fourth core. What else are we going to do? We might as well move. Let's move the leader in. And let's move the cavalry in. That's it. We could actually move these guys. You know what? We're going to do battle in there. These guys are going to move in there. Okay, and they could do that because the leader has a... He's got a range of two on him is what he does. Now, here's the other thing. You can, you can move your blocks without a leader activation, but in doing so, you risk a straggler roll. So if you roll one to three, I think you lose a step. Uh, four, five, or six, you, you don't. Uh, not similar to some other uh, Columbia games as well. Okay, so we've moved there. Let's, do a, let's move into the Redoubt just because we can cross that river. Oh, we're going to be at a ford. I don't know. No, you can cross a river. You don't have to be at a ford. Dun, dun, dun. Stream. So it's basically one block that can go across there. That's not going to be very good. Whatever. Let's do it anyway so we can do combat just for fun. What about here? Ford. Cross a ford. I can do... I can do two. So let's go. Just gonna make sure these guys are in range just for the first score. Oh, you know what? I could have fired this artillery in first, but I didn't. Uh, that's it. But you know what? He could go into the attack. So, so light and horse artillery can go into an attack, but heavy cannot. They have to stay behind. They they're not allowed to move into attack. So let's move two units. We'll use this big four in there, and. You know what? Let's do the do two infantry units, the two big fours. That's what we'll do. Now, so you're allowed to have a maximum of four. I couldn't move because there's only two can go across the ford, and and the Russians can have a maximum of four. You can't have five. Uh, sorry, three. It's a woods. The Russians can have three in there, and we could have three in there. Except I couldn't move uh, three across. But yeah, just you know, there still is a maximum of of that. Okay. Lastly, what are we going to do? Let's take out these militia. So there's a Moscow militia here. What do we have? Oh, do we have anything activated? We've got that. Aha! Why don't we do this? So we've got the first core activated. Let's go with his infantry. He can move two, one. Uh, sorry, he's right here. One, two. Uh, on a road in the woods. Let's go. You know what? Let's move that artillery in there. For fun. Before we get into battle, then let's let's have a look at our guard that we activated the guard uh, the guards leader um, Mortier. So before we do the battle, what do we want to do with these guards? Let's get them up. Let's move this guard's artillery here uh, with him. Where's our other big guard unit artillery? Uh, move them into here, I guess. Oh, wait a minute. What's that's a village village stacking unit and yeah, no effect. Okay, so it's just whatever the terrain is. When it's clear, so let's do that. Hmm. What do we want to do with that artillery unit up there? 
see, these are the choices that you have to make, right? Okay, let's move this guards artillery here. And now you can see we're now we're starting to mix up cores, which is which is fine as long as your leaders are within range of them. And uh, what are we gonna do? Let's just move him into here. That's for whatever. That's what we're gonna do. Okay. Um, I think I'll switch positions here and we'll see if we can have a better look at the combat. Okay, let's start with an easy one first down here, this militia one. Now, let's look at see what the combat uh, is for woods. So, the battle area, woods. All cavalry fight at a B1. And all artillery are at a minus 1. So that means that my A2 artillery is going to be an A1, which kind of sucks, but whatever. There it is. Uh, what else in woods? You can not do any squares. Well, okay, that's fine. We don't have the cavalry in here anyways. And again, whoever's got the A's, B's, or C's goes first kind of thing. So in this case, we've got my, my light artillery, which is now only shooting at an A1 because it's in the woods. So we'll do three, uh, three, A, three A1s. Big... Miss. Big miss. Nothing there. Okay. Then we immediately go to the defender, the Moscow militia. They're a three uh, C1. Big miss. Big miss from them. Okay. And then let's go to our first core uh, infantry, three C2s. Whoa, big miss from them too. Terrible. Okay, so that was round one. Round two, the uh, artillery. Nothing again. The militia. Nothing. And the infantry. Jeez, nothing. Okay, third round. Oh, look at that. The artillery. Man, wouldn't that have been a good roll if we got an A2? He gets a 1. So there we go. Uh, oh, other thing to note that you see that there's this is like a hilltop. We, we actually attacked on flat ground to flat ground. But if we were attacking up a slope, there would also be modifiers for that. B -b bombardments is what it is. Sorry, not necessarily attacks, but... Just be aware of that. Okay, so that was round three. That was the artillery. Um, two dice now for the Moscow Militia. Ooh, they get a hit. I'm going to take it from the artillery. Just because I want my infantry unit to be able to roll three dice for what is going to be the last round for him. Okay, he gets a hit. He gets one hit, so this brings us down to this. So that was the end of the third round. I have not defeated these militias, so it's now the fourth round, and I have to retreat. Unfortunately for me, the artillery can retreat without being fired upon, because they are an A. But the militia gets another C1 roll, which they miss with a four. And then my infantry can retreat. Then this guy can do whatever he wants. Uh, he could retreat if he wanted back through the swamp, but he's not going to do that. He's just going to hang out there. Okay, so let's uh, let's have a look at the next battle area. Let's do this. What are we at here? These are these Russian Yagas. And they get to fire first. They're pretty weak, but they get to fire first. So they've got uh, one, two B2s and one B3. Let's do the B2s first. And we'll go to woods again. There is there's no effect. This is a pure infantry attack. Oh, the B2s, they get they get one, they got a five and a one, so we'll take a hit. And then the one B3, miss, he gets a six, so don't worry about that. So then we'll do the uh, three C2s for the French. Okay, we get one, one, two, so that's a hit. Uh, okay, and it means boom, and one of these uh, Jaegers is gone. Okay, so now let's do the four C2s. Okay, and I get uh, a one and two, so uh, it is a hit. Now, um, or sorry, uh, we kill these Jaggers. Now, I probably should have just retreated those Jaggers, you know, but I'm just trying to show you what combat looks like. So now these guys could regroup into an adjacent hex or whatnot, but we're not going to. We're going to keep it like that. Another thing to note that is here, you get down to your last step with the what, with an artillery attack, um, with a bombardment, you can't actually kill the unit. They're just forced to retreat. Um, um, so artillery bombardments can never defeat a unit, but with they're down to their last step and you roll and they get a hit, they have to actually just retreat. Okay, so let's go and do this redoubt attack, which is a bit of a suicide thing for these guys, but whatever, let's just check it out. So now everybody in the redoubt gets 
what's called the D2 bonus. I mean, you got to get double hits in order to score one hit. Um, so, like I said, this will be a bit of a suicide attack, but here we go. The uh, Russian artillery, they've got a 2A3. Oh, they miss. Okay. And then we've got uh, four C2s. Oh, uh, let's just double check. We're in the redoubt. Yeah, D yeah there's nothing else. Okay. Four C2s for the Russians. They get two hits, so boom. Let's just pretend they got one hit, okay, just for fun. Okay, let's just go through everything and say that they missed the rest of them. So then the, the French get uh, four C2s. Okay, look at that. I actually scored a one and a two for hits from the French. So, so that counts as one hit. So in this case, this four infantry would have to go like that, okay? Um, uh, so two hits makes, makes one hit. So, in any event, let's pretend uh, we're on the last round, and he's able to retreat, and he goes over here, and, and we'll just call that, um, well, you know what, I'm over, no, sorry, oh, this guy was the guy, this was the leader, forget it, let's just bring these guys back up, okay, and let's do the last attack up here, we can probably actually really do this one, again, we're in clear terrain, the Russians get 2c2, miss, and the French get 4C2, miss, and then 5C2, one hit, two hits. Okay, they actually defeat these Russians, and off you go. They could do a group or whatnot, but they won't. Okay, so now we're at the end, so there's no more battles, so I'm going to turn these leaders. This is very similar to, like, um, East Front, right, where you, you lose a step on, on, on your he headquarters is really what it is. So that's what we'll do right there, and right there. Okay, so now we're at supply. You have to be able to trace supply to a road back to your supply. Um, these are symbols or points or whatever you want to call them. Uh, now, and in this scenario, uh, each side gets four points. So, I mean, the French... We didn't really take a ton of losses in the beginning here, so you really want to keep your leaders up. So I'm going to add one to him, uh, one to him. Oh, look at this! I got to keep that guy up, and one to him. So that's three, four. Did I lose anybody over here? Yeah, we just did combat up here, right? Did I lose that? Yeah. So we'll take that four to a to a five. Okay. Now, same thing with the Russians. I want to keep your leaders up. We'll probably get this militia guy to come up. He'll go up two, just for fun. Uh, I'm not really thinking about it. And let's get this leader back up. Okay, so you can see after you start getting into combat. Oh, and then we advance the, the turn. And then we'd roll again for initiative, and we'd start all over again. So that's basically gameplay. But you can see once you start getting into taking losses, those four supply points you get, you're looking like, holy cow, what am I doing? Which is why... I've made the mistake of attacking as the French, you know, uh, on all <laughs> on the entire front, and you take losses, and then boom, what do you do? You really kind of want to say, hey, I'm going to try to push with these guys, and then with these guys. So you don't want to activate all those leaders all the time. And and really, you want to get the guard, uh, the Imperial Guardian, because they're the strongest units. You want to get your C3s, and you got some C4s, and you got some B3s and whatnot. You want to get them engaged so that they can start... Uh, beating up on on the Russians, the Russians in turn want to avoid that. They want to hang out in the redoubts. They want to swap people out from the redoubts who might be weakened, so the redoubts don't get taken over. Um, uh, you know, and and they want to find a, a, a the right time to counterattack. It's a bit there. They may consider withdrawing. You know, or finding some weak uh, uh, French units like those those uh, voltigeurs or, or whatever to uh, to hit. So keep track of who's weak and and strike accordingly. You've got more units, but they're not as they're not as powerful. So you really have to think uh, about what you're doing. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, for for me from Bordeaux. Um, it's it's a it's a good game. I enjoy playing it. It is a uh, I would say it's an intense game, or it's a it's a slugfest. Like I think you get the the real uh, effect of, you know, at the end of it, um, you know, there was thousands lost on both sides, and the uh, 
the Russians were, were forced to retreat. It's considered a victory for, for Napoleon. Um, and he was able to, to move into Moscow, you know, except the Russians had vacated away from, from out of uh, Moscow. And he stayed in Moscow a month too late. I think he decided to stay for the entire month of October, and he shouldn't have. He should have started to, to that it, he should have got out of there. Because we know with that uh, he waited too late and he had to retreat from Moscow, the famous retreat in Moscow where he lost, you know, the majority of his army and, and the, overall the campaign was a failure for him and he, he, gets, he gets ousted from because of that. But um, in terms of the game itself, it's, it's, it's fun, but it's a, you have to, it's almost like a chess thing. Um, it's not a real easy, I'm going to throw some dice and move some stuff around the map. You've got to look at it and really figure it out. And it can get uh, confusing when you start mixing up uh, your 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 uh, core units into it. So it's for, for me, it's enjoyable, but it's not light. Um, I mean, overall, it's not a it's not the, a, you know, a super complex game, but it is, you do have to do some figuring. And, and I think that's what's kind of neat about it is because, you know, you got Fog of War with blocks, and if you're playing it by yourself, I mean, you don't really have that, but you kind of do because because there's so much going on and, and some things can be confusing. Like often what I'll do is just try to activate leaders and then figure it out from there, you know, which also makes it uh, uh, fun that way. So I would totally recommend it. It's a, it's a, it's a flavor though. You've got to, I think, probably enjoy Napoleonics and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, Carl Milner was, uh, uh, sorry, Wilner is still uh, very uh, active, I think, on Board Game Geek um, in terms of responding to, to different people uh, about different things. Uh, I think I had a question a couple of years ago and he responded pretty quick. So, again, I, I, I think this is a great uh, Columbia game. Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, pull it out probably once a year, really, is what it is. And I think now what I'm probably going to do is maybe go to some World War II Avalon Hill stuff or something like that because it's getting cold here in uh, Winnipeg uh, and it seems like the Russian front is kind of the the, the flavor of the month. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, give me a like, subscribe, uh, share some comments. Again, maybe I got something wrong here. Uh, let me know what you think about that whole um, surrounding the redoubts with artillery. Maybe you disagree uh, with what I've said about it. Uh, love to have the dialogue about it. Okay, take care.